Hello everyone, I'm Marie, a graphic designer, and welcome to my channel. Here on this channel, we learn how to create illustrations, 3D simulations, and branding using Adobe Illustrator. Let's get started with today's tutorial. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will learn how to create a circle using Adobe Illustrator following the request that was left in a comment on my Facebook page. Create our new document and click and hold the rectangle tool to get our other shape tools. Click the ellipse tool. Click and drag on the artboard while holding shift to create a perfect circle. Now by default we have a circle with a white fill and a black stroke. So we're going to double click on the fill icon to open the color picker and we're going to select the color that we want to fill the circle with. In my case it's red. Press OK to close. Double click on the stroke icon to open the color picker for the circle stroke line. I chose white but since the background is white it's not visible. If you don't want your shape to have a stroke click on this little icon that says none. The none icon works for the fill as well just make sure that the fill is selected when using it. So now I'm going to double click on the stroke icon again and I'm going to pick a color gray for the circle stroke. Now select the shape and go to the top bar where it says stroke and here we can select how thick we want our stroke line to be. So first I changed it from 1 to 5. Now I'm going to select the circle and I'm going to change it from 5 to 10 points. If you click on the stroke panel, you can find the weight option again, along with other options, like the stroke alignment, which is set to center by default, but you can change it to align the stroke to inside, or align stroke to outside. I'm going to set the alignment back to center for now. And then I'm going to close the stroke panel because we are going to go back to it later on in the video. So I'm going to select the circle <clears throat> and change the stroke uh, weight back to one point. And while my shape is still selected, I'm going to press Control C to copy it. And then press Control F to paste a new circle aligned on top of our original one. With our second circle selected, we're going to select the scale tool and we're going to scale this new circle down a little bit so uh, that it's going to be smaller than our first circle. Then I'm going to select the fill icon and change it to none. So now on our second circle, as you can see, we only have the stroke color, which is gray. The inside has no fill, so it's empty. Now I'm going to change the stroke to white. We're going to change the um, width to 4, so it's thicker. And then uh, we are going to go back to the uh, stroke panel. Here I'm going to choose dashed line. Uh, it has by default 12 points and then uh, as you can see it made a dotted line and it cuts uh, the angles. It has angles. We can round the angles of these lines by clicking uh, rounded angles. Or you can extend the length by clicking this third icon. So um, I'm going to leave it to rounded uh, edge. And then here where it, there's these two options which are for rectangled shapes or shapes with corners. Uh, in this case we don't have corners so this doesn't really matter. Uh, then I'm going to go back to the dash and I'm going to decrease so that we get smaller lines. 
as you can see, the space in between the lines gets smaller too. So then I'm going to go to gap and increase the gap space. And uh, you can do this uh, with the remaining um, with the remaining spaces there, uh, meaning that you can make like the dash like one length, the, the next one a different length, and the same with the gaps. For this tutorial here, I'm just going to stick to the first two. That way it's a uniform dotted line. Like uh, was requested in the comment on my Facebook page. I'm going to change this one last time so it seems more like dots than uh, little lines. Seems like uh, a dotted line with little dots instead of little lines. So now last but not least, uh, the request was to create this dotted line with a gap in it. So we're going to use our scissor tool. This one here. And we are going to click once to create the first cut. And then a second time to create the second cut. And then we're going to delete the line that is in between the two cuts that we just made. So we're going to select it with the direct selection tool and click delete on our keyboard. As you can see now we have our a circle dotted line with a gap in it. Suppose I wanted to increase this gap. I'm just going to select the scissor tool again and I'm going to click again to create a third cut and then I'm just going to delete uh, the part that was cut off with my third cut. Now suppose you made a mistake. You can click Control Z once to uh, annul like the last action and you can keep pressing it like twice, three times, as many times as you need to delete the last action. So now suppose you want to move the gap instead of uh, you know annulling it, recreating it, just select the rotation tool. You click the center of the circle or the rotation wherever you want the rotation point to be. So that's your first click. And then secondly, you just drag the line and it will follow the uh, center pin. One last tip, if you select both circles and you scale them upward, since the um, strokes are still strokes, they are going to get bigger in size, but the stroke width is going to stay the same. So if you want to um, scale the circle strokes proportionately, to make them bigger proportionately, you're going to have to expand them. And this way, if you're, uh, you select them, go to Object, Expand. You might have to do it uh, first twice, maybe. You might have to do Expand Appearance and then Expand again. And uh, then it becomes uh, a grouped object. So it's not a stroke anymore, you can't change the the gap, the width, and all this stuff, but if you scale it upwards or downwards, it's going to scale the width of uh, the object as well. So if you have an object that has a stroke and a fill and you expand its appearance, It'll separate the stroke, which becomes a fill because it becomes its own object. It'll separate the stroke from the fill, making the stroke into its own object. Here, as requested, we have the end result. Hope this video was useful. If you enjoy my work, please like and subscribe to my channel.